Hello, hello, hello. Happy, happy Thursday. Is it Thursday today? It is. I lose track of the days, especially in Christmas, in this month, with so many things happening. Welcome to Joa Fitness Podcast. And today, again, we are with Dr. Nap Grebal. She's a physiotherapist focused on pelvic floor. And she's been sharing with us a lot of, of her experience and knowledge for the past uh, two, three months. We've been talking a lot about uh, how we can support the community of the mothers in Toronto and in the world. So we're always talking about specific issues and also information that it will help you to feel more comfortable and to go through pregnancy with more knowledge and feel that we're here to to also give you some advices and know that you're not alone. So we are connecting the community of women in Toronto. So basically, I know not because I met her in the Toronto Yoga Mamas, which is a school uh, dedicated to mothers in in the city of Toronto, and I became a doula a year ago, and I did the birth and the postpartum program. It was really uh, interesting, but it, it was also really uh, awakening for me as a woman. Um, pregnancy and this process is, it requires so much of emotional support, and it's not only a physical change, it's all a uh, whole life changing. And we're here to, to share with you, because I have seen a lot of postpartum depression. Uh, lately, so actually that was one of my main uh, interest to go to study doula because I realized that something was happening in the woman after having kids. So basically, this is the series that we're dedicating for women, and this is the last one in 2019. Uh, as we just uh, say goodbye to this amazing year that brought to us the connection to to do this podcast together. So how are you, Nab? How are you today? I'm doing great, thank you. Um, just winding down the year in a positive way um, and trying to stay warm. Uh, snow today in Toronto, and uh, we're all, which is nice actually, it's nice to sometimes see the snow. But yeah, I'm just trying to stay as positive as I can for my patients. This is a time of the year where we see a lot of people, you know, like mentally, they can start to kind of like feel down because the holidays aren't always a positive time for everybody um, but we try to keep it as positive yes yes yeah. talking about this specific weather affects us, our hormones because the vitamin d is not accessible with the light that is such a short time to receive light so i recommend everybody to make sure that you have good amounts of vitamin d and particularly i supplement my vitamin d3 with the fish oil with omega-3 together every morning. So this is something that you could check with your doctor, but it's definitely recommended. And uh, especially in this time, so your mood is not swinging in the low negative areas. So let's try to keep it positive with that. And for us also, for especially for after pregnancy, you guys have the baby blues and the postpartum. Uh, happening to women so we have to be very careful one of my clients who had a baby the model for mariposa mama so congratulations dalia she had a baby cairo and i'm so happy it was uh, just it came about two weeks ago and very healthy she trained for the whole time on pregnancy so very exciting how you can see a woman pre a pregnant woman training all the way to the end of the pregnancy and now she's so ready to train in six weeks, right? That, that's a period of waiting, about six weeks. Yes. Yeah. We, we talk about the 40 days of waiting. So, And today we actually will be talking about the urinary urgency that it, we, could, we could also, it could be related to the UTI, the urinary tract infection sometimes. And it's not only affecting women with a pregnancy, in the pregnancy time, but it's also in other cases and also in men. So we will talk about this, especially for uh, what's happening in our bladder and how we can treat it, how we can detect it. So this is the topic of today is urinary urgency. So tell us about this, like how many cases do you normally get about this? How many women, how many men? I would probably say a third of my caseload. Um, yeah, one of the clinics is, uh, over, so urinary urgency, frequency, overactive bladder, that's what it's called, and kind of like, I guess people should know what it means, so it's when you feel like all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you get that urgency to go to the washroom. Sometimes it builds up, which is very 
natural for it to do. It's like, oh, my bladder is full. Okay, cool. I can wait. But for some people, it's like that. And then they have to rush to the washroom. Um, or if someone is going more than, so five to eight times is normal during the day. Okay. So go for urination. If someone's going like 15 times, 20 times, they find they have to go right before they leave their place, just in case a couple times, because they're like, oh, I don't know what's going to happen on my commute to work or when I'm driving. Or if they get home and they put the key in the door and all of a sudden they're like, wow, I have to go to the washroom. That's kind of a trigger that something is not, not normal. Like that's not normal to be going that much or waking up at night, disruptive sleep because of having to go to the washroom as well. So specifically for the mothers and the women that are listening to this, during the pregnancy, the frequency goes, it's going to be a little bit more high, right? Go higher. Yeah. So because of the pressure of the baby on the bladder, women, women will experience that increased frequency, but they still shouldn't be going every like 15, 20 minutes. That's a sign either the pelvic floor muscles are very tight and they're constantly telling the woman to go to the washroom more or they're actually weak and then what happens is because of the pressure of the bladder on the muscles they feel like they have to go more okay okay and what's the difference between this urinary urgency and like a urinary tract infection so that should be temporary right yeah. so as soon like the infection is gone that urinary urgency that should be also gone the urinary urgency during an infection is caused by the irritation of the urethra um, and then the muscles are right beside, so they get irritated, and then the person needs to go, or they feel like they need to go more. But once the infection is done and over and treated, that should go away. This is more something that is there regardless. What's the, the treatment? Body. Sorry? The treatment. So treatment depends. So as I said, it might be related to weakness of the muscles, in which case um, we can be training the muscles to strengthen. Um, if it's related to muscles that are tight and constantly telling the bladder, oh, we have to go to the washroom, then we're trying to relax those muscles. Okay, so we're trying to like lengthen the muscles, and we've done a couple of videos where we talk about lengthening the muscles, which we did also in the previous one with pain with intercourse, talking about specific stretches. Someone can do hip openers um, as well as belly breathing. But then the third thing that someone can do is oftentimes going to the washroom frequently is a pattern a behavioral pattern that someone has gotten into and it might have started you know when they were even younger that someone you know like their mom told them okay just go to the bathroom empty your bladder go and then during pregnancy it gets worse and then they can't get rid of it after so when they feel the urgency not rushing to the washroom because that is something that just makes it worse if someone's rushing to the washroom versus walking slowly doing belly breathing trying to delay a couple minutes just because you have the urgency do not rush do not go delay a couple minutes and then try to build up two minutes five minutes ten minutes 15 minutes and something sometimes the urgency just goes away if you just drop yourself as well yeah yeah in my case i was a bodybuilder a bikini competitor and i had to drink so much water so i i think i increased my water for like I started at two liters and then I, for competing, was like five liters every day, <laughs> like a, more than a gallon. One gallon is about 3.7 and I was drinking more than that. So I think I definitely, I, I, I have a way higher level of frequency than a normal person. That's fine. Yeah. But, so that's fine. If you increase your water intake, obviously you should be going more. Yeah. Right? Unless, yeah, unless you're like you know, like in the desert or something, something like that, then you need more water. But if someone actually has overactive bladder and urinary urgency, they actually limit their fluid intake uh, because uh. they don't want to go to the washroom. So some of these people are drinking a cup, uh, a cup uh. of water a day because they think they're very scared that they will have to, as soon as they like drink more water, they'll have to go okay. to the uh. washroom. So it's a, a vicious cycle because they don't want to go. They don't want to drink water, and then when they do, they have to go, uh -huh. and they're very dehydrated. Oh, wow. No, I, I definitely I see your point, but no, in my case, I think 
I just drink a lot, I go a lot, and it's a little bit frustrating because in the night, sometimes I go tw- two times. So it is hard. And at this point, because I did it for six years, so my body got used to drink five liters for six years. I, even though I haven't competed for two years, I still drink as as five I think five liters a day I still drink that much and if I don't I get headaches <laughs> so that's my oh, story wow. yeah that's my story and it was hard especially when I travel last time I went to Italy it was hard because there is no like easy change you know washroom to find in the go so I really suffered with that because I do have a behavioral pattern to go to the toilet every at least 90 minutes like yeah I, I do a lot so I don't know if that's okay but it is it's part of my life now. So I don't know if you guys there listening can identify with my somebody like me. Yeah, if you find your 90 minutes is more like it, the slowly the pressure builds up, you're feeling the bladder is getting fuller and you have that urgency, then yes, go. That's yeah. fine. But if you're literally timing, oh, okay, it's been 90 minutes, I should probably go to the washroom. And anytime you go to the washroom, something is going to come out. The bladder never completely empties. It's like breathing in and out. When you breathe out, there is still air in the lungs. Same thing. So if you go to the washroom and something comes out, doesn't mean you necessarily had to go. So I would recommend for you not doing every 90 minutes, but sometimes doing an hour 45, yeah. right, to see if you can push it. But if you're drinking that much water, five liters is a ridiculous amount of water. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, I mean, I understand why you have to go that often. Yeah. yeah, I I'm yeah, gonna try to it. drop it to four. I think four is already really high, but let's just go down to four for 2020. I promise I will do, go down to four liters. I don't want to flush the minerals or all that because I know you can also flush minerals, but I do have coffee and coffee is a diuretic and dehydrator. So I, I mean I will I try a diuretic. So I try to take uh, if I drink one coffee and then I try to drink a little bit more water. So. Yeah, that's how I usually do. And um, also two things. Um, the incontinence, right, on men, they usually they have some issues with the prostate. They may have some incontinence. Um, have you gotten any client that, like a man, um, that has this type of condition? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so many. So many guys have leakages. Yeah, I think, I don't know if that could be, like, a different uh, kind of, like, podcast we talk about, but tons of guys have leakages, either... Related to prostate, related to aging, they their muscles have gotten weaker, or it could be after they get their prostates removed because of prostate cancer, they have to go through the muscle to get the get to the prostate to remove it, and their muscles are very weak. And then afterwards, we do kegels. Okay. Yeah. So again, for for a man and woman, kegels is one of the best ways to strengthen those muscles. And yeah. what about urinary tract infection? Uh, I particularly, unfortunately, I have gotten many times urinary tract infection, and I think they call it cystitis. Cystitis, yeah. That's something different. So interstitial cystitis is irritation um, of the lining of the bladder, okay? And that is something that is more so now seen as kind of like, technically it's like seen as something that's like causing inflammation, Right, but that's different than an infection. Okay. Um, there's no actual real known cause of interstitial cystitis, um, but pelvic floor physiotherapy, um, doing stretching, doing the massage internally has helped many of my patients. Um, but some of these things have kind of like a, usually a trigger. So pain with intercourse, urinary urgency frequency, um, interstitial cystitis. Um, I see a lot of patients who are high stress, high anxiety. They might have in their background depression as well. Something happened a few years ago and then they started to develop symptoms. That's what I actually see a lot with overactive bladder. And 60 to 70% of my patients say, oh, this happened, death of a family member, job loss, divorce, something like that. And all of a sudden they started to develop these symptoms. So and it's more of a nervous system thing. Okay. Um, yeah. And for treatments, um, I had to take antibiotics for the urinary tract infection. It's the one called Macrovid. And I think it takes about five days to stop. I have done the natural remedies, like homeopathy with cranberry juice, I think. And 
and other ones never worked for me. So I don't know what's your I, your, your opinion about going on the natural way with natural herbs or going dry into the antibiotics for the infection. I mean, if it's like an actual infection, right? Because sometimes it can be like symptoms of a, an infection or like a low grade infection, but if it's an like actual infection, technically you should be treated with antibiotics. That's also outside my scope of practice. So I can't like tell people, you know, like what to do, what not to do. Cause as a physiotherapist, that's not within my scope. Personally, um, I've never had a UTI, but the one time I did start to develop symptoms of it, I took, um, it's called bear, bear berry, uva okay. ursi, which you can find at Whole Foods or a natural uh, store. And it's an indigenous herb supplement, um, to help with UTIs naturally. Okay. And that helped me. So okay. my wow. symptoms are very low grade. Yeah, but I'm I'm always gonna recommend because I work with physicians and it's outside my scope of practice. Like I can't recommend actual medical things like that. Yeah, I try uh, uña de gato. Uh, uña de gato is basically cat's claw. Right. It's supposed to be really good. It's basically like a herb, and it's it's a herb that you can find in natural places. And you make a tea out of these cat claws. But I didn't feel any difference. And it, it happens that if you don't fix it right away, within one, two days, you start bleeding. And it's very painful. You, you get even a low blood pressure. You can faint. So I don't like to play with it. I, lately, when I get it, I go to antibiotics right away because I don't... Yeah, I, it, because it can, it's an infection, right? It's going to cause fever. Yeah. It's going to cause all these things in your body. And if you just wait, it's going to get like worse and yes. worse. So it needs medical attention for sure. And cranberry juice, actually, there's not a lot of research it's to awesome. support it. Um, just like there's not a lot of research to support like the orange juice yeah. for, you know, like vitamin C yeah. um, for uh, getting like or treating someone if they're sick. But I always say, you know, like you can definitely have it like as something that if you'd like to have to prevent in the future... But as a treatment, I would recommend going to the physician for sure. And um, so basically that's what we could uh, share about this topic of urinary urgency, UTI, incontinence, incontinence for men. Um, I think there is a lot that we could still talk, but these are the basics. Do you want to share anything else, any treatments that you suggest beside the Kegels, beside the... I would, I would really, really, so Kegels, again, like, not for everyone, depend. like, if someone has very tight muscles, we are not doing Kegels, for sure, um, but if someone has urinary urgency to even doing a bladder diary, the Inter International Continent Society, inter I'm going to say that again, International Continent Society has bladder diaries you can find online, it's a good way to track how much liquid you're having and when you're going to the washroom and like how many basically seconds you're peeing, right? Because some people are going like a ridiculous amount. And then that gives you your baseline. And then from there, you can train your mind and bladder to go at like more longer intervals than going so close together because it does impact a lot of people's lives. I see it all the time. A lot of my, like literally a lot of my patients like at work, it's affecting them. Like on vacation, social activities, they can't sit yeah. through a movie sometimes. Yeah. They're going yeah. multiple times. It sounds like and my life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if they're going that much, then it's like mentally affecting them. And then they're not like interacting with people and not doing the things that they want to do. Since last yeah. podcast, we talked about pain during intercourse. I wanted to also, maybe you can maybe confirm this, but they say that after intercourse, shower and clean the area before having a second round <laughs> and urinate so okay. for women it's to go and urinate to clear the bacteria out of the urethra okay. because the urethra sits right by the vaginal entrance and so if there's any like bacteria that's when a lot of women can get that uti so after intercourse uh, obviously yeah cleaning showering is good but also urination okay <laughs> So that's yeah. another tip for everybody. Right. Okay. Well, this is a very interesting topic. So we have uh, finished a year with this 
podcast of uh, Joa Rivas. I'm very happy that we connected. I'm excited for the 2020 that is going to bring more information and probably we'll continue talking about prenatal and postpartum series. It seems like it, there is a lot to, to share and every time we meet with other clients, we can see that we can share what they are suffering and it's not only one case. It's generally a lot of people with all these type of questions. If you have questions, you can always write to us. You can find Dr. Nab at Pelvic Floor. No, no, Pelvic Care. Pelvic Care that's CA and it's P E L B I C A R R E, right? Yes. It's only yeah. one C yeah. basically. So Pelvic Care that CA with only one C. And uh, mine is yoafitness.com. So you guys can always write to us directly to our private emails and we will always take consideration to talk about those topics into our podcast if you want to leave any comments also please share all your comments with us and share with your friends and your community and wishing you the best nap for these uh, last two weeks of 2019 i know you're going back to visit your family yes yes i'll be leaving for winnipeg tomorrow for one week and then calgary for one week i'm very excited to connect with family and i know you're going to Vipassana for 10 days starting Sunday, correct? Yes, yes. I want to be meditating on silent, but this time it's going to be a beautiful experience because I'm going to volunteer and I'm going to uh, cook and clean for 150 students. Wow. So I have done two Vipassana, which is a silent meditation of 10 days. This time I'm going my third time volunteering in the kitchen so it's gonna be fun uh it's gonna be a lot of introspective growing in my own silence and but at the same time because i'm gonna be cooking and cleaning i'm gonna be serving them so it's a great way to give and receive from all what we do so it's important to always do that balance of energy so i'm excited for that and coming back on january with all my superpowers recharge (laughs) <laughs> and then on January we will continue these chats so thank you so much now for, for helping and supporting our community and all the best for the end of this year thank you so much Joe for having me on the podcast this year and I'm hoping we're going to do big things for women in 2020 as well great projects especially the Mariposa Mama is a great project that I will give more information but basically it's going to start in Spanish I'm from Venezuela, so it's going to be in Spanish to start in the first phase. It's going to provide fitness, uh, some movements for a woman there in the process of um, in the pregnancy and also in postpartum. And we also want to work about emotions and also nutrition for them. So it's going to have a complete integral work and it's going to be delivered next year. So it takes a lot of little details to, to finish the program, but I'm excited for that on 2020. But um, beautiful, I'm excited for the new year. 2020 is probably a year of expansion and and of uh, connection. So thank you so much and have a beautiful day, girls and guys. And remember that together we are stronger.